Good evening and welcome to Quorum. I'm Wilson Stripling. Things continue to move quickly at the Capitol. Today is the 72nd day of the legislative session. Another deadline looms tomorrow. The deadline for original floor action on general bills and constitutional amendments originating from the same House. So is expected to be a busy day at the Capitol and it's a busy night at the Capitol with the House of Representatives still in session at this hour. On tonight's program, we'll be chatting with members of the Senate Highway and Transportation Committee, as well as the House Transportation Committee. From the Senate, we have the chairman of the Highways and Transportation Committee, Senator Willie Simmons. He is a Democrat and has served in the legislature since 1993. His district includes portions of Bolivar, Humphreys, and Sunflower counties. Also joining us from the Senate is Senator Philip Moran. He's a Republican and is serving his first term in the Senate. His district includes portions of Hancock and Harrison counties. Also with us tonight, Representative Manley Barton. He's a member of the House Transportation Committee. He is a Republican and is serving his first term in the legislature. His district includes portions of George and Jackson counties. And don't forget, we'd also like to hear from you tonight. There are several ways you can contact us. You can call us toll free at 1-877-405-5247 and ask your questions live on the air. You can send an email to us, quorum at mpbonline.org. Or if you use Twitter, use the hashtag quorum and we'll get your questions that way. I want to start out by learning a little bit about what these two committees are responsible for. The Senate committee is called Highways and Transportation and in the House it's called just the Transportation Committee. So uh, Senator Simmons, you're the senior uh, legislator on the panel tonight. I'd like to ask you, what, what does your committee over in the Senate do on a daily basis? Primarily we're responsible for looking at policies, dealing with highways and transportation in general, both rails and airports and ports to a certain degree, but we also have a ports committee. Uh, in addition to that, we're responsible for the preparation of the dollars that go to those agencies to make sure that our state aid road program receives the funds it needs to provide the services that they provide and the Department of Transportation for the state. And Representative Barton, I guess on the, um, the House side, is it basically, <laughs> basically the same? Very, very similar. We, you know, we're looking at uh, certainly bills that have been uh, filed that, uh, that uh, that fall into those categories that, that, that affect transportation systems or whatever it might be, uh, uh, we would look at those bills. And, and I think, and also looking towards the future and you know what may be coming down the road. Uh, well, speaking of the road, uh, let me ask uh, Senator Moran. I know you're new to this, uh, new to the new to the legislature, new to this committee. But but tell me what you think the state of uh, of our highways and roads in Mississippi uh, are. I guess it depends on what day and what constituents you're talking to, and which road you're on. You know, but for the most part, I, I think our state our highways are in pretty good shape. They can always use some improvement. There are certainly roads that. Uh, that need some overland, need some work. Some of them need a little widening, and there's certainly a lot of four-lane projects that need to be completed. Uh, it's all about funding at, at the particular time and in which we'll be able to do that at, at some point. Does the economy have any effect on, on the ability of the state to, uh, to see some projects through? Absolutely. There's only so many dollars to go around. And uh, this year, being a tight budget, uh, we'll, we'll be uh, having to take a, a, a real hard look at that. Uh, there's there's always a greater wish list than there is dollars to fulfill it and we just have to look at it and see uh, where the priorities are and, and where the emergency situations are and what needs to be taken care of this year. Uh, Senator Simmons, over the years, what would you say is the biggest issue or the biggest problem uh, faced by uh, highways and roads and, and people who travel them over the, uh, in this state? Mississippi right now has a good highway system. Uh, we had visionary legislators several years ago when they passed the 87 program and then they came back with Vision 20. Both of those programs was very good and it helped put in place a four-lane highway system that's been very beneficial to us. One of the drawbacks if we was a Monday morning quarterback to look back over what happened was that in their vision to bring on board the 87 program, there was no money put in to provide maintenance on those highways. So as a result of that, we have seen many of our highways that was constructed through those programs not, able, not a, being able to maintain uh, the maintenance because of the shortage of funds and our bridge program beginning to need attention now. So again, visionary, very uh, good program that was put in place if we had brought on board the maintenance aspect of it as well as putting on some other formula 
for funding those programs as opposed to a flat tax, we'd probably been much better off today. Oh, Representative Barton, what do you, uh, where, where do you think money could come from? Where do you think that, uh, that, that money could be found to, to help uh, with this maintenance issue that certainly comes up? These are huge projects yeah. uh, back in the 80s in particular that, that provided a lot of the roads we use today, a lot of two-lane roads all over the state, and now they're four lanes, and we take that for granted. We also take for granted that they're going to be in good repair all the time. And they're going to be maintained. Right. People expect that. Uh, well, I, you know, I think, uh, go back to uh, a comment uh, Senator Simmons said, I think if you go back to the, to the mid-80s uh, when the 87 program was being uh, formalized, uh, you know, they were visionary. And they, you know, they did a lot of things that uh, 25 years later we look back and we kind of take it for granted. Uh, but that program uh, really made a tremendous difference across the state and really gave us some, some real opportunities today and there were some goals that were a part of that uh, 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 that project, you know, getting everyone within 30 miles of a of a highway, mm -hmm. a four lane highway mm -hmm. type thing, mm -hmm. you know. And and I, I look at at kind of where we are as a real opportunity to be part of uh, maybe the next program, you know, wh whatever that looks like. And there's going to be some metrics associated with what you know, what are you trying to accomplish? But um, but but as a part of that whole effort. Uh, you know, gasoline, we're, we're flat tax, uh, as, as Senator Simmons says, and the problem with that is as, as uh, cars have become more efficient, the, the amount of gasoline people are buying has gone down some, so the revenue stream uh, is not as much today as it was a number of years ago. That's, that's not going to change. That, in fact, it's probably going to be exacerbated by uh, higher uh, gas mileage cars and so forth. And so we're, we're going to have to look at how do we, uh, how do we, how do we maintain, and how do we build new roads that are needed? Uh, and and I think the short answer is you can't do it with the funding we have today. Now I don't know where the other funding comes from. If I if I did, I maybe I'd be the governor. But mm -hmm. uh, but but you know that. But that's part of what I think we've got to we've got to deal with. I I had the uh, fortunate enough set on the. Governor's Commission, the Tax Commission, Tax, tax Study Commission a while back. And, you know, out of that uh, commission, the recommendation on long-term roads was to look at some other models around the country to, to look at what other people are doing. How do most other states? Well, uh, some do of they, them have, do they get it through gasoline? They like specifically we? mentioned the North Carolina model, and I'm, and I'm not w real versed in the North Carolina, other than we they had a presentation on that while, uh, while I was on the commission. Mm -hmm. And, and they went from a flat tax, and this was a number of years ago, to some type of index. And I'm not sure exactly what the index was, but, but, it, but it changed the, the, the way they were, uh, I guess, taxing gasoline, but they were hmm. changing the way that revenue stream uh, was, uh, was determined, and, it, and it's helped them. So, um, so I think we are going to have to look at some other options and, and some other uh, revenue streams if we're going to continue to especially when we build new highways and maintain the ones we've got. We, you know, we're going to quickly get to a point where all the revenue we have is just going to be on maintenance. So, Senator Moran, do you think we need uh, additional taxes to, to, to fund road maintenance in Mississippi? Well, no one likes to initiate new taxes by any means, especially in, a, in, a, in an economy like we are in now. We're, um, <clears throat> we're in a situation where we're just beginning to come out of some rough times, and it, and it will get better. If you look back o over a pattern, uh, every eight or nine years, you, you have your highs and lows. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got to get into a better economic situation, but as Representative uh, Martin referred to, you know, looking back on it, the 87 program um, was, was, was ingenious. They, they, they really put a lot of thought into it. And the 87 program, just for folks who aren't familiar with it, that was the that was the ambitious the, the four-lane highway program that, that, that turned so many you know, two-lane roads into four-lane roads. The, the average Mississippi, and if you think about when you get off of the main highway off the interstates, but the average Mississippi, when you think about where you live, uh, there has been some type of four-lane project within 30 miles of your house all over the state. Mm -hmm. And it's made traveling so much better. Uh, it's, it's also helped us to bring in new industry. Uh, when you start looking at the, at the Nissan and the Toyota plants and, and things in South Mississippi mm -hmm. as well. And we'll continue to do so. Uh, but, you know, getting back to the, to the funding, 
uh, we've, we've pretty well reached a point now where basically all we can do is just try to do maintenance work with mm -hmm. the funding that we have that hasn't increased. Uh, MDOT's uh, budget has not been able to, we've not been able to increase it any uh, to allow them to be able to do this. So when you, when you look at it, an index versus a flat tax, it's something that may very well have to be addressed down the road. I don't know that in, in this particular uh, budget year that that can be looked at, but at some point um, we're going to have to look at, at, at getting some revenue, additional revenue, if we're going to be ambitious and continue to um, move our highway program forward somehow. Uh, Senator Simmons, how much funding comes from the federal level? You mentioned state aid programs. What are, what are, what, what, the state doesn't have to bear this burden completely, uh, does it? The bulk of the funds that we put into our highway system come from the federal funds. I don't know the exact amount or uh, percentage. Uh, we, we have several ways of funding our highway programs, but the bulk of it will come from the federal government. And then we have the 18 cents flat tax on gasoline. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know it, but it doesn't matter how much uh, the cost of gas go up is not driven by the 18 cents tax. Uh, it's because the 18 cents tax is going to remain the same amount on a gallon of gas regardless to the situation. So unlike if, so if gas sale tax, unlike corporate tax or personal tax, as many others. You talk about the difference in a percentage, like sales tax would be a percentage, right, a percentage. of the total yes. bill, whereas the tax on gasoline stays. We're going to get 18 cents on every, a gallon. Every gallon. We, we saw a peak uh, in our collection of revenue for highways in the state of Mississippi right after Katrina. And the rationale for that was that we had so much billing going on on the Gulf Coast <laughs> and as a result of that uh, a lot of transportation, people moving around, so there was an increase in purchase of gas. And that is the only time within the last 10 years or so where you've seen an increase. But the level of funding that come in from our, from, from our taxes on gas is going to be basically the same. That creates a problem for us because we can't generate new revenue in order to be able to maintain. And at some point, we have to look at the mechanism for getting money in and understand the importance of a good highway system. If you have a good highway system, it's going to enhance our potential and opportunities for economic development. Absolutely. Without it, we won't have that economic development. Well, couldn't you argue then that the more fuel efficient, that fuel efficient cars uh, can reduce the the funding that the, the that the state gets to maintain the highways those cars drive on. Fuel, fuel efficient will certainly have an impact on it. And, Not that and fuel efficient is bad, but if you're if you're getting paid, if you're getting funding from the amount of gas <laughs> that's sold, the less gas it's sold, the less funding that comes in. It will have an impact. In addition to that, as you look at the increase in in cost of gas, uh, when individuals start to look at their purse and wallet and say. I'm going to slow down my travel. I'm not sure. going to go as many places. So I'm going to buy less to gas. That. When that happens, you also will see at the same time you have this great need for more resources. You may very well see fewer resources coming into the system to maintain the highways. Well, this the, the, then this flat tax, that's something that the legislature, your committee perhaps, has the, the power to change should that be deemed necessary. Uh, do you not have that power? <laughs> Someone said once that when we in the legislature, we most can do anything we want to when it comes to laws and, you know, so we, we do have the power to do that. However, we also are cognizant of the fact that no one wants their taxes increased. Sure. We also are cognizant of the fact that the price of gas, the fuel, is going up tremendously in the economy and people are suffering, and we don't want to push at this particular time something onto them that's going to impact us in a negative way. But we also understand that we have to maintain our highways and we have to build new highways if we're going to have the economic development that we want. So it is a catch-22, so to mm -hmm. speak, mm -hmm. and it's something that we're going to be looking at. We don't know at this particular point what would be the best way of doing it because another way of generating revenue, many say, will be through toll roads where they will pay for themselves as well as generate revenue. Several things we can put on the table. Uh, the North Carolina uh, model that the representative talked mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. in addition to a Georgia model where they allow the various districts uh, within the state to come with a tax, mm -hmm. and that money is kept within that district. So there are a lot of different things that we're looking at, and as of today, we don't know where we will go with it, but we want to, again, do something that's going to help us maintain good highways build highways where we need to and maintain those highways, but at the same time, 
be concerned with the citizens of the state of Mississippi. All right, we have a caller now with a question. This is uh, George calling from the Delta in Greenville. George, go ahead with your question, please. Yeah, uh, I'd just like to inject, uh, you guys were trying to find uh, some revenue to uh, help out with the, uh, the transportation of our highways. Uh, I'm not I'm not an uh, advocate of, of a, a guy who push drugs, and I'm, I'm uh, and I don't think I'm, I'm personal to sell drugs. But over the years, we have confiscated confiscated a lot of money from drug dealers who who haul drugs over our roads, and and we're trying to stop that as much as we can. But we are taking some of that money, percentage of that money that we seize from these drug dealers, and put it back into the highways because these same drug dealers are the ones that's hauling drugs in here over our highways. Why don't we take some of that money? Uh, that we see from you guys and put it back in transportation. Gentlemen, anybody want to take that? Well, in, in, any time that you <laughs> identify a source of revenue, normally though, that revenue is identified, it goes into gym funds or some sp special fund. Um, these funds may very well be going to public safety, part of it. Some of it may be going back to the county where the uh, offense is, is right. the citation is, is given. So. Those funds normally are already designated as to where they're going to go. And when you tap into those funds, you have to replace those funds when you pull them from where they're going. So you have to send some other funds over there. So it's a good suggestion. It's something we can look at. However, you have to know that wherever those funds are currently going, there will be a board in that particular agency uh, area if we just pull those funds and say we're going to put them on highways. You might be fighting with another agency, in other words. Robbing Peter to pay Paul. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. All right. Well, let's move on. Senator Simmons, you mentioned bridges. Uh, um, gentlemen, I'd like to hear your thoughts on, on uh, bridges in Mississippi. We hear we get these reports, these report cards on the various bridges, and I've yet to see a good report card on, on Mississippi bridges. Uh, Representative Barton, what about the, the bridges in, in your part of the, the state, and do you think that uh, uh, more money needs to be spent on bridges. I guess it goes along with all the upkeep, but you, we talked about the highways. What about the, the bridges that have been there, right. in some cases, for nearly 100 years, well, in some cases more? I, I, let me talk about one particular program. Uh, Senator Simmons is very familiar with it. It's the LSBP program, which is Local System Bridge Program. Uh, started in the early 90s, uh, started funding that program. Uh, the legislature has bonded. There's no permanent funding for that program. The legislature normally puts about $20 million a year into the program. This year, there are 1,600 bridges that qualify for that funding that, that have a, what they call a sufficiency rating of less than 50%, which means they need to be repaired today. 1,600. At $20 million a year, 10 years from now, there'll be 2,400 bridges. So we, even at $20 million a year, we won't, we won't be even do, we won't even catch up. We'll, we'll actually have more bridges that have a sufficiency rating of less than 50% 10 years from now than we have today. So $20 million a year in that program is not enough to uh, just to maintain the bridges. Uh, and, and we need to have enough money in that program to start working that number down uh, instead of it going in the other direction. So, so we have that problem all over the state. Uh, and, and these are bridges, uh, for the most part, that a lot of the counties in, in Mississippi do not have the funding to do. So if the bridge gets down to a certain point, um, they just have to close the road because the, maybe they don't have the funds to repair it. So it's a tremendous inconvenience for the local local governments. And, at the, and the program has been tremendously successful uh, through the years. And uh, so that's a program that, that uh, and, and that's a real problem area. Yeah. Well, Senator Moran, you're a, uh, like Representative Martin, you're a former county supervisor. How, how much of the responsibility for things like bridges uh, should fall on the local municipalities, the counties in, in many cases. And is it their responsibility to keep a reserve fund to be uh, repairing roads and bridges in their own areas? As much as possible. Uh, as he referred to, the LSB program, uh, the state aid program, <clears throat> these things played a vital role in, in, in helping us to be able to replace some bridges uh, during my ten tenure as Board of Supervisor. And I know that a lot of the counties, uh, they, they depend heavily upon this, but as, as he mentioned, the, the 20 million that's put into the program uh, doesn't allow us to keep pace with the, t the deteriorating bridges over a long period of time. Um, and, and, and it's a problem all over the state. 
it seems to be that there are more deteriorating bridges um, in the northern part of the state than in the southern, mm -hmm. uh, possibly, quite possibly because they're, they're just a little bit older. Um, but I regardless of where they are, they have to, uh, there has to be some attention to them. Um, you know, certainly no one wants a situation where a bridge collapses. So, um, you know, from a local standpoint, we, we want to try to be able to fund it as much as possible locally. But it's at some point, <clears throat> depending on the the economic situation of the county, it's just above their head. They they can't afford it. Senator Simmons, people aren't actually in danger on these bridges because they're 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 inspected regularly, and if they're if they get to a certain point, like uh, like you said, they, they they shut them down. But should people be concerned as they drive on Mississippi roadways that they're not safe because there's not enough funding to keep to keep them in top repair? We ha we have a good system of evaluating our bridges. And normally, when they get to the point where they uh, put to the point where you, they are not safe to travel, they would be closed. But it is a concern, and it's a concern that the citizens of the state of Mississippi should be. And not only we're we talking about county bridges and bridges within municipalities, but we're talking about bridges on the state level. Uh, the amount of money that we are able to put into the bridge program is inadequate, thanks to um, Senator Amy Tuck when she was a state senator. She came forward with a bridge program that was very helpful to the local communities, and it did wonders. We have not since that time come forward with additional programs to help fund and support those programs. So there are many bridges within our communities now where the local communities are having to close those bridges because school buses are going across them. And the worst thing that can happen is for us to pick up the newspaper tomorrow morning and read where a school bus is falling off into a bridge because it was in such disrepair and we were not able to go out and, and prepare, repair that bridge. We're headed in that direction. As the representative indicated, $20 million is nowhere close to being adequate for us putting the kind of monies into these bridges program that we need to support it. And unless we're able to generate new revenue, we have a choice. We can pass some kind of mandate and send it down to the county and municipalities and we know that they can't afford to do anything with it. Uh, we can just sit and hold our hands and say we're going to pray and hope that nothing happened. Uh, at the federal level, uh, we lost uh, a program uh, that we used to have that could help us in some situation, in situation where we call earmarks. Uh, but we said to our fellow officials that we don't, no longer want earmarks and Mississippi benefited tremendously from those earmarks so we can't go to our federal legislators uh, at the federal level and say we have a few bridges in the state and we need some money as they're marked to, to repair them. We have to just wait and hope that the federal formula will change at some point where we get more money coming from the federal government and our economy will get better at the state level where we can have more money to put into the uh, bridge program. But it is a serious problem. When you combine the state and local bridges, we're talking about 2,000 plus bridges that need our attention right now. All right, we have another caller on the line, David, calling us from Jackson. David, go ahead with your question, please. Well, my question is, um, just how do y'all rank, like, certificate of need? I mean, I, I, and I understand that the coastal area needs, you know, hurricane evacuation routes, and, you know, South Haven and, and Jackson is growing like crazy. Um, you know, and my specific question, I guess, relates to, like, the airport parkway. I mean, how do y'all rank projects on which one goes first and which one is kind of put on the back burner? And how much, how much of a role do you play in something like, like projects? Because isn't that an MDOT function? And how, how involved are you all in, that, in a process like that? And I think in many cases, uh, you, you know, the, the professionals make some recommendations. And I think... When you're talking the, about professionals, you well, mean... Well, I'm talking about the M, uh, MDOT primarily. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and they do studies, they know where a lot of the needs are, and they make recommendations, and I think they get input from the legislature. Mm -hmm. So as far as prioritizing, they, they have their input, and then if it needs to be funded on the state level, that's when, that's when it gets to you guys. And sometimes it's, it's an economic um, package because, uh, for instance, like when Toyota was coming in, uh, there needed to be a four-lane and, and, and the road completely reworked uh, and, and built to come into the plant. Um, so it, it, it's, it's a combination of, of uh, traffic, the need, and an economic impact that a particular uh, company or an industry would bring to that particular area. 
Uh, there's different factors that go into it, and, and they bring their recommendations before the, the House and the Senate, and, and we look at it from there. But uh, there, there's, there's definitely a formula that they use for it, depending on what the need is and where it is. I think the 87 program, they actually identified highways that needed to be full lane and listed highways within the legislature and amended it in some cases to include additional highways. The bridges um, basically are left to a formula that's put in place and based upon the evaluation and the engineers and the architects looking at those bridges and the condition that they're in, they are placed on a priority list and then those bridges are funded based upon the need. I see. Uh, going back to what I was referring to, prime example is in the, the, the port road coming off of I-10 going into our, our, our big port there in Gulfport. Uh, there's scheduled to be over $500 million project uh, to be, uh, to expand the port in Gulfport. Well, if you're going to expand it to that point, you know that the, the trucking and the rail coming out of there is going to increase tremendously. So we have to be able to get it out efficiently. So there's, uh, it's, it's underway and, and right-of-ways are being, being bought up to put in a new uh, four-lane coming in off of I-10 going directly to the port and also uh, redoing the rail system to come out of there to be able to get those products off of the ships and get them out in, in a sufficient time. Also, uh, so that, you know, economic standpoint, uh, over in my county, uh, one of the, my, I represent Harrison and Hancock, over in Hancock County, uh, we have the 603 uh, addition, the road coming around through the kill. Uh, this is part of the evacuation uh, program. So therefore, you know, it, it f fell into a different category there uh, as an evacuation route. And this, this road is a project that um, will, will come into completion hopefully in a few years. Uh, so it, it, it just depends on what, what it falls under as to what category as to the need. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but the, those are two of the projects on the coast that, that will be underway in a few years. One topic that's gaining ground across the country is the problem of texting while driving. And several bills were introduced to outlaw the practice. Most, if not all, uh, died in committee. Uh, Representative Barton, why do you think this is the case? Why, wh what, what will it take to get a, do we need a, a, an anti-texting bill? And uh, if so, why is it difficult to get something like that passed? I think, well, and I can't speak for everybody, I can speak for myself, I, I don't really have a problem with, with, with us having some type of, of legislation in place. Uh, it is tremendously dangerous and a lot of people do it uh, foolishly, I guess. Uh, I think some of the concerns I've heard is, is how do you enforce it, mm. you know, and, and I think that's probably been the, the, the biggest concern I've heard, which is how do you enforce it. Senator Simmons, what are your thoughts on on on, a, on, a, on legislation that would somehow outlaw texting? Anything that we can do to help in the safety of driving and keeping our highways safe, we need to look at it. And we did. We had uh, two or three bills that was introduced. We did not advance any of those bills because we had some additional questions that we feel need to be answered. One is enforcement. Uh, another one was whether or not it can be utilized as a means of profiling. Uh, whether or not um, it would be a primary traffic violation and, and how does a law enforcement officer uh, look at a moving vehicle and be able to determine that that vehicle should be pulled over from that. So a lot of questions that need to be answered in that regard and perhaps sometime in the future we'll be able to address that issue because we are getting reports that it is a safety problem. What, what about uh it seems like we went through the same uh, or a similar conversation when uh, cell phones be became more common. It wasn't all that long ago that only the rich folks had cell phones, and it seems like everyone has one now. Uh, and there is, is grumbling every now and then about the possibility of legislation that require, would require some kind of hands-free device. I know they've done that in some other states. Is that something that, uh, that could be passed here or that should be? Something we've looked at. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think last year the Senate did look at a bill that was dealing with cell phone usage, um, but it kind of addressed it for young right. uh, drivers as opposed to the entire population. I think something's going to come uh, when you start looking at what's going on at the federal level and the more you get insurance companies involved in it and individuals who are very concerned, uh, mothers against not 
uh, drunk drivers with mothers against phone drivers or whatever you want to call it, uh, I think you will see some movement and perhaps we'll see some kind of legislation pass addressing that issue. I have another caller on the line. Ralph calling us from Batesville. Ralph, go ahead with your question, please. Yes. Backing up earlier in your program on the bridges in northern Mississippi and the uh, problem being more drastic there than in the southern part of the state, District 2 here built, is we have colder weather and we have more ice and snow and the salt. We have to put more salt on our bridges and that tends to deteriorate. Mm -hmm. Not only the concrete, but the pilings and the caps, and that is the reason for the severe deterioration. Of course, we have older bridges, like you said, and we really need funds from somewhere to do this. The public is not aware, the general public is not aware of how drastic the situation is and how dangerous it is. And I wish the, you know, we could address that situation somehow. You know, the climate's role and, and, and deterioration of highways, does that change the priority uh, of a bridge or a road based on uh, um, how, how quickly it can be, how quickly it can deteriorate because of the, the climate? I think the weather certainly has an impact. Uh, like in South Mississippi, rain, we have, a, we have a lot of rain in South Mississippi, and so, uh, you know, we have uh, bank stabilization issues at times that, that may cause a bridge to, um, uh, to get to a point where it has to have work on it uh, sooner than, than maybe you would think under normal circumstances. So certainly weather and we don't deal with the ice and snow like they do in the northern <laughs> part of the state, but, uh, but I would say so. Uh, let's move on to uh, another issue that seems to come up every session and that's the ability and the legality of sheriff's departments using radar uh, to check speeders, to catch speeders in their counties. Uh, a lot of folks aren't aware of this, that in Mississippi it's becoming more of a topic uh, uh, now, but only in, and I think it's uh, one or two counties can uh, sheriff's departments actually use radar. That going back to many years ago for reasons of corruption and, and things that were done in, improperly back in the day, sheriff's departments today can't use radar to catch speeders. Do any of you think that that should change? And if, if not, why, why don't you think that should change? It's a similar situation to the cell phone and other issues that you have, and what you just said is true, uh, in that, at least that's the perception, that many law enforcement uh, sheriff departments could very well utilize the radar system as a means of generating revenue and just out issuing citations and for the it, sake it, of issuing citations. So as a result of that, the legislation has been very reluctant to allow sheriff's departments to utilize radar for that particular reason. I'm not really sure that we will ever overcome that and if we will ever actually give in to uh, putting radars in sheriff vehicles because of that. So it's an issue that's before us and it's been around now for 10 years, I guess. So. Do, do you believe sheriff's departments should, should have uh, the ability to use radar? I've always been against it. Uh, each time that it has come before us, I have uh, been opposed to it, and my rationale for being opposed to it, for the very reason we just talked about, uh, the, the abuse, the potential for abuse. And but you could make, couldn't you make the same argument that the, that the local police departments who can use radar would, would do the same thing? We only, we only allow local police departments to utilize it on certain highways where the population is large enough to do that. We don't allow every municipality in the state to do it. And again, we want traffic to flow, we want citizens to feel safe, and we want them to be able to drive uh, up and down our highways without every community they go through, that they're subject to being pulled over because some individual decided to rather take a coffee break to go out and run a radar and harass citizens on that particular day. That's the concern, uh, okay? There is also a safety concern uh, where many sheriff report to us that out on certain roads within their county, there's an abuse of the uh, fact that you don't have anyone out there patrolling. They know those, it, so they're speeding. And they're speeding. Yeah. So it's an issue to be looked at. We just haven't figured out yet how to deal with it and address it. Uh, Senator Moran, would you support a bill that would uh, allow sheriff's departments to use radar? This is something we'll definitely have to look at in the future. I know it comes up every year. There's some pros and cons to it. Uh, sometimes I get emails and calls. Uh, citizens are <clears throat> concerned 
about seeing a, a high presence of of uh, sheriff's cars out on major interstates and 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 uh, municipality cars as well. So, you know, there, there's some concern there that if they ran radar and, and the sheriff's cars were out on on uh, 55 or I-10 or I-20, any of these, that uh, rather than being on the roads, uh, the 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 local roads, uh, taking care of the, the the local citizens there. So. But the, you know, but the the pros to it is, is that it it will allow them to be able to um, control the the speed of the flow of traffic on their local roads. So there's pros and cons to it both ways. I get calls both ways on it. So I, and, and I'm sure it's something that will continue will continue to entertain each year, and 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 it will come come before us. Uh, it just depends on on what the feeling of the legislature is, and and. And possibly uh, it may come to a deal where we sit down and, and, and have more workshops with the sheriff so that we're all on the same page. And, 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 and that fear factor that, that he's talking about from some of the legislatures that it could be abused. And, and you always have to be real careful of, of not over-regulating something. And, and it could be, but there, there's nothing takes the place of, of the sheer presence. Uh, if you're driving down a, a two-lane country road or a, and, and you see the presence of a, of a sheriff's car on that road, it makes you a little bit more mindful to, to drive more careful. Uh, stay off of your cell phone and pay attention to what you're doing. So um, there, there's definitely ways that it could be handled. Uh, Representative Barton, uh, we, we, you're our lone House member here tonight. Do you? What's your well, sense of how the House would you vote know, on something out like of that? The, uh, coming out of the county as a mm -hmm. supervisor for, for many years, uh, speeding on country roads was a, a major mm -hmm. problem for us. So I see the see a, a need for additional help. Um, uh, you know, I, I, and of course I'm like uh, uh, Senator Moran. Uh, I get calls on both sides of the issue, people that are very opposed to it and then other people who feel like it's a necessary tool. Uh, the House actually voted. Uh, I had asked someone to text me. That was one of the uh, bills that was being taken up as we were leaving today. Oh. Uh, and it got voted down 71 to 48. And what bill was this? Uh, radar. So that happened just, uh, just 15, 20 minutes ago. It happened just tonight. So, um, so and, and I think a lot of the same concerns that the chairman mentioned uh, was uh, uh, some of the things that I heard. What did you say the vote total was? 71-48, I believe it was. So uh, uh, not, a, not a lopsided uh, uh, victory, I guess, on one side, but obviously some folks feel very strongly sure, about it sure. in, in, uh, in both directions. Well, we have another question now. This one's via email. Uh, someone has emailed a question to us to quorum, and here it is. If we give sheriff departments radar, could we increase the speed limit to 65 on all major two-lane rural state roads such as Highway 61. Uh, in Mississippi, the, I, I think if it's, unless it's a controlled access road that stays at uh, 55. 55, and there are no two lane roads in Mississippi, are there, that are higher than, that are no, higher than 55. Is there ever any think, talk or movement or, or support safety. for raising that? I think all of our two lane highways are 55 or less. I think so. And you go to Texas and some are 70, even on a two lane road, but you don't mm -hmm. see that happening in Mississippi. Safety well, well we, have, we have a couple of things working with that. One is the safety. In addition to that, I indicated earlier that we get many of our federal funds from the federal government. And because uh, studies have revealed and indicated that the speed limits that we have on our highways is, is a safer speed, and if we don't comply, with some of those, then we're subject to losing some of our federal funding. Well, uh, uh, those are legitimate concerns, certainly. Uh, I know that it can be frustrating where you're out on a rural road, you know you're just about the only one out there, and you feel like you're poking along at 55 miles an hour, and I would imagine that's where some of that kind of sentiment comes from. And he was saying if we have, if the sheriff's departments have radar where they can enforce the speed, uh, could we race it? So, but at this point, you don't see any situations where that would be, where that would be done here. It's not likely that we would no. do that. Okay. Uh, I believe you mentioned, uh, Senator Simmons, a moment ago, toll roads as another way to, to raise revenue. That's been mentioned. It's been a long time since I've heard much more chatter about it. There was talk at one point of doing a toll road from Jackson down to the coast, and the way to pay for it would be through tolls. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any uh, talk uh, of late about toll roads or about new ones or, or funding anything through toll, toll roads? It took schools of uh, thoughts on it, and I'll, I'll yield to Senator Moran. But it's two schools of thoughts on it. One is that toll roads are needed 
and they would be beneficial and could pay for themselves um, in many, many years and would be a way of putting dollars in the future into the revenue stream. So when we look at it from that point of view, if there's an area in the state and we're going to be looking at that in the future that would demand a toll road, then we certainly want to look at that and see how we can make it work. In the past, we have had in the statute a section that said if you were going to do a toll road, then you had to have another road that would run parallel with the toll road. And the rationale of the thinking, I think, behind that was that for those individuals in our state traveling who did not want to pay the toll, would also have access to a highway that was running in the same direction. That would get to be too expensive because you're talking about two highways. This year, uh, on the Senate side, we removed the language that required that and we will allow the Department of Transportation to take a look at our roads and in some areas they're saying that like on the Gulf Coast it may be something that's feasible to do in some other areas of the state it may be something feasible but since Moran is from that area and mm -hmm. he can talk about that a little bit more. You like the idea? I think it's something that uh, in the future we're definitely going to have to take a serious look at. Uh, probably the road that's most common that, that's mentioned uh, is uh, Highway 49 South which would link the coast to the capital and this goes back to that half a billion dollar project in, at, at our port in Gulfport. If uh, coming out of there once you get to I-10, if, if there is a way to construct a, a new uh, uh, toll road or a high speed road that would bring you into Jackson and connect you to I-20, then would allow you uh, to ship the product east and west better. Uh, it's something that certainly uh, would be looked at and entertained uh, also along with that, I've always been a, a big believer that, that we need to improve our rail system. Mm. Uh, if you're coming out of uh, off the, that port again, and also uh, we have a, an airport out there, Stennis Airport, uh, that we feel like that could possibly wind up being a, a, a major uh, player in the cargo industry. If we can tie that in rail system wise, and it sits right on I-10, and tie that, and that ties into that, that, that road that would bring us to Jackson, then that opens our state up for um, greater possibility of travel and, and moving this cargo back and forth. We have a caller on the line who has a question about uh, toll roads. This is John calling from Clarksdale. John, go ahead with your question for us, please. Yes, I lived out of the state of Mississippi for 55 years and I drove truck and all over where I drove truck at is toll roads and why we can't have a toll road at the enters into Mississippi on 61 coming out of Memphis in Interstate 55. There's good money, good jobs, and all over where I drove, there's all kinds of money to be made. And we, But we don't have no toll roads. We have good roads, but no toll roads. Could you answer that question for me, please? It, it is something, again, that we're going to look at in the future. And that was one of the reasons that we removed the language mm -hmm. to say to the Department of Transportation, you no longer have to have a parallel road uh, running along a toll road. So evaluate our highway system, uh, look at the traffic, and let's determine whether or not toll roads will be an advantage, advantage to us and something that we can help generate funds uh, for the maintenance of our highways in the future. So perhaps we'll be hearing more from, uh, from MDOT now that they've got a little more freedom when it comes to... Well, you know, in the selection process, uh, you have to go through two chambers. We did it on the Senate side, and I believe the House may have looked uh, at the we, same thing. We, we've already made the change on the House side, so yep. we, we may end up having the same language. Okay. Right, uh, so if that be the case, we will send it to the governor and hope that he will feel the same way we feel and sign it into law, and then we will have the freedom for them to do that. Uh, but we're going to be looking at many ways of generating revenue so that we can maintain and build highways and do the things necessary to give us a state with a good infrastructure and one that will attract industry in all parts of our state. Another caller now, Stephen calling from Brandon. Stephen, go ahead with your question, please. Um, at the national level, there's been a, um, a a serious debate about um, oil production, domestic oil production to lower the price of gasoline, to also to uh, decrease our dependence on foreign oil. In the uh, state of North Dakota, there has been a boom in production of, um, of oil. Uh, my question for the panel tonight is, um, we've talked about funding for bridges, funding for roads, and how, um, you know, about where the money comes from. And the question I have is, is there a possibility that we could see 
increased uh, offshore drilling off the Mississippi coast or maybe in uh, private land within the state for natural gas and also for um, oil production in Mississippi and then use those royalties as a means to go to our budget to maintain um, for our roads and bridges. Let's hear from our coastal representatives first. Uh, gentlemen, would you like to uh, address uh, that? Well, I'm, I'm one that's always uh, supported us looking at the opportunities that uh, especially in natural gas uh, offshore, uh, that we, we utilize those uh, opportunities to, to bring in additional revenue. Uh, you know, and I think that's gonna happen. Uh, now, the, 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 the bigger question is, is to, you know, where does that money go? Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, as, as, you, as already has been indicated, we're, we're looking at any opportunity we can to increase funding for transportation uh, and and maybe that's uh, maybe some of that money would be part of the solution, uh, you know. But but we're going to be looking at a lot of opportunities, and 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 maybe that'll be one of them. Gentlemen, well, as as you know, there there's currently a um, a program in place uh, to begin drilling in in our Gulf, in our in our state waters, south of the islands, south of the Barrier Islands. It is projected that it will bring in somewhere around $250 million into the state. Now, naturally, some of that uh, will probably go into education. It, it's needed there as well. But I would like to see a portion of that go into highways. And not only just in that area, but as, as Representative uh, Barton referred to, uh, we have an abundance of natural gas and we certainly need to utilize it. We need to get it out of the ground. We need to get it from under the water and put it to good use. Uh, natural gas is something that could be used on our trucks and our trains and, and, and help take some of the burden off of the fossil fuel. It will never completely replace it, I don't think, in our, in our lifetime, but it will help balance it out. And, and, it, and in doing so, with the abundance that we have here in the state, that could, poss could quite possibly be a good revenue to help us bring in um, m more money and put it into our roads because roads is something that affects every Mississippian every day. Unless you just stay in your home all day long, you don't go to the store, you don't go to work or don't do anything, you get on the streets and the roads every day. And so, the, it, you know, if you think about it, it, it affects all of us in our everyday life. So we have to take care of our roads. I'm sure everybody's going to be vying for a piece of that pie if, it, uh, if it, that's ever baked. Uh, let's go back to uh, the email list now. We have an email question uh, coming in to us, and here it is. It's from Lynn. What highway safety issues are on the legislative agenda? Senator Simmons. Highway safety issues, keeping the highway safe, I guess you can say, but repairs. Uh, maintaining our highways and making sure that they are safe. Uh, looking at our bridge system and making sure that we repair those 2,000 plus bridges and or, and I say repair, but many of those bridges need to be replaced. And so we look at that from an economic point of view as well as a safety issue. And th those are two things that are very high on my list as far as safety is concerned. I think the uh, bridge safety is, is probably one of the more primary ones. I guess some of the bills that were introduced, the, the, the texting bill, that, that's a safety issue. And sure. it's, but, but there are some, some, some uh, enforcement issues there. There were a number of things that came about, but, uh, but I think there was a, quite a few. I think, I think you might even put the radar bill in a, in a, as a safety issue, you know, speeding and that type of thing. And so uh, I, I think there's a, a lot of people are focused, or at least they're uh, in their mind, they're focused on what they consider to be a safety issue, and all of those probably are in, in, in one form or another. And, and one other would be the weights on the highways and enforcement, mm -hmm. because overweight vehicles mm -hmm. can be a safety problem. And at the federal level, I know they were just debating whether or not to add weights. There have been requests coming to us that we should go from five axles, and five axles, I think, give us like 84,000 pounds 
another axle, six axle, would give us around 96,000 pounds. This would allow uh, trucks with heavier loads. Heavier loads. From, yep. f from, in some cases, far away places to use Mississippi Road, because there are limits on them now. If, they've got, if you've got a heavy shipment that's coming from, that wants to cross Mississippi, and it's overweight for Mississippi, they essentially have to go around us. Exactly. You know? And some argue that our interstate system are adequate enough to accommodate uh, the six axle. That may be true. However, you very seldom, if ever, see an 18-wheeler unloading on the interstate. They exit the interstate and they're on our roads and highways that are not capable of handling mm -hmm. those loads. So it creates a, a maintenance problem as well as a safety problem when you do that. So we're very concerned about those kind of issues. And we'll look at that as both being a maintenance situation as well as one of safety. You mentioned local roads. and, and uh, in what ways can the state, can your committees, can, can le the legislature in general help uh, these local cities and towns in replacing their own road problems, be it bridges or, or roads or, or what have you? Well, the state aid road program uh, is a program that, that does help local communities. I think uh, uh, Senator Moran uh, talked about that earlier. And, and it really is a, it's a standard, state aid standard is a standard uh, of, uh, a little bit higher than what I'll call the, what the normal county standards are, but not quite what the state road standards are. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, it's it's just a, it's just you're you're maintaining a road at a particular standard, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, give you for instance uh, on a state aid road, uh, the slopes on the side have to be uh, maintained at a certain level. Uh, the weight limit on the road has to be so much. The right of way has mm -hmm. to be so much, and it's just a set of standards that you have to build and maintain the road at. Well, there's some state funding that comes with that responsibility. You agree to, to maintain this road at, at this standard mm -hmm. and the state will help you. It, many times it's not enough money to, to do everything that needs to be done, but, but the county can put some money with it, uh, or in many cases maybe fund the entire project. But, but that's one of the ways the state does help through the mm -hmm. state aid program. Mm -hmm. And the local system bridge program is, is a similar thing. State helps some. And um, and so it and it helps these counties. One thing I, I, I wanted to go back and mention on the on the state uh, on the local system bridge program, we're talking about funding level at twenty million dollars. It's eighty two counties, so the twenty million dollar funding really amounts to about one project a year per county. So it's 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 not a lot. So if you get eighty five or ninety bridges out of that in any given year, out of the total number of bridges in the entire state, that's probably that's probably doing pretty good. So it, 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 it's a lot of money in one respect, but when you spread it over the whole state, it doesn't go very far. We've got uh, Brent calling now from Gulfport with a question. Brent, go ahead with your question, please. Yes, I was wondering um, if there's anything that can be done to Highway 90 uh, now that it's finished. Um, so the, the water backs up so bad on when it rains. I mean, it's... Uh, it doesn't drain properly. I didn't know if there's anything at all could be done about that now since the road's finished. Senator Moran, that's uh, 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 your neck of the woods. What can you tell us about Highway 90? Well, that's a that's a, a forever um, pro a project there where you're forever battling Mother Nature. Um, at different times of the year, if you ever travel down Highway 90, sometimes you feel like you're getting a sand blasting. <laughs> if we get uh, winds from a certain direction at a certain speed, uh, it blows sand all up on Highway 90. And, and, and MDOT is, is good about getting out there and getting it out. But a certain portion of that gets down into the drain system. So then if we get a hard rain back in behind that, that creates a problem where water stands on Highway 90. So uh, is it just a constant battle? It, it's then? an ongoing battle, and, and it has been since uh, before we came here, and it'll be here when we're gone. It, it's 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 a battle against Mother Nature's checks and balances, trying to keep the sand and the water off and keep the drainage open. And uh, it, when you're dealing with sand, that those things are going to happen. But they uh, they work real hard at that. Work with the county and to keep the sand off of the road and the sand dunes. Uh, that they've planted and put in place on the on the on the the south side, uh, they're growing and, and and as they get bigger, they will help protect uh, some of the sand from blowing on to Highway 90, which in tail will help keep the drains open more and help the water get off of the road in a more timely fashion. All right, uh, we've got about a month and a half left in the legislative session, so uh, I'd like to ask you, Mr. Chairman, what's what's next for your committee? Tomorrow is the deadline for getting bills that came out of our committees mm -hmm. off the calendar. 
and then we'll start going, we'll go back into committee mode and start looking at the House bills and see how many of those bills, uh, companion bills, what we have passed and how many we can accept and send on to the governor and how many of those we would have to amend and put back on the floor to this full Senate to vote on and determine where they're going to go. So next week we'll be busy in committees looking at the House measures and hopefully we got some good bills coming from the House that we can take up and act on in a positive way. Any particular piece of pet legislation you have that you're anxious to see all the way through? As it we're, relates to transportation? We're, we're, we're very anxious to see what happens with the toll uh, road bill. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to that, Senator Johnson and, and the uh, House, I understand, is sending us over a, a bill that's going to, at some point, look at what we can possibly do with design bill. Uh, that you all address that particular issue? Not yet. Okay. A design bill, what is that? Design bill, many say it is a way of Speed. expediting the process and saving money because you can do both things at the same time. You can design and build a highway as opposed to taking it through uh, various procedures. We looked at it, uh, didn't bring it out of committee, and we was kind of waiting to see what the House was going to do on that particular issue. And on the uh, on the House side, uh, we, the chairman uh, was, wasn't able to be with us tonight. But what uh, what do you see uh, ne well, as next for your committee? I think it's a very similar process. We've got a uh, we're going to have a busy night tonight and a busy day tomorrow. <laughs> uh, and then I think uh, starting next week uh, there'll be additional uh, floor action on probably on Friday, uh, motion to reconsider. But beyond that, then I think next week we'll be back in uh, committee mode. And, and looking at the bills that's come over from the, from the Senate. So it'll be uh, next, big, next week will be a busy committee week for us, too. Gentlemen, thank you. Representative Barton, Senator Simmons, and Senator Moran, thank you all for being with us tonight. And we thank you for joining us for Quorum. We'll be back next Wednesday night at 7 when the topic will be tourism and how it impacts all of our lives and the state's bottom line. I'm Wilson Strivoy. Good night.